Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be looking at what is one of the most cool and unique game development tools I've covered since starting this channel. Covered it a few years back, we're revisiting it today and it is called Artisy Draft 3. And the reason why I'm revisiting today, other than the fact that it's really cool, is the fact that there is now a free version. And it's not a free gimped version, it's actually really quite useful. So we're going to take a look at what those free limitations are and we're going to look at what Artisy Draft is in general. Now Artisy Draft basically is a tool for game development designers but on top of that it also has tight integration into game engines so the stuff that you're creating as part of your design document can actually be integrated into the game so you can also think of this as a database front end so that is what artisy draft is all about if i was going to describe this as like another program it's basically microsoft project slash visio for game developers. So you see here, you got three different examples. Uh, Galahad, which is kind of an RPG style game that uses templates. Uh, Manf uh, Manic Manfred, which is sort of a design document for an adventure style game. And then this generic one right there that kind of walks you through the tutorial. We're gonna look at the Galahad one in action, but first, some of the limitations of the free version. So it's got a 660 elements limit for free. So you can see here, you click this at any time and see how much of the things you are using. So you're limited to 50 entities, 100 assets, 10 locations, and 50 flow fragments, dialogue notes, etc. So if your game design is getting more complex than that, you're going to have to buy the full version. But you're gonna find that's actually a pretty decent amount uh, to really go ahead and check this out. And there's no limitations beyond that. So if you're using it commercially, that's fine. It's just if you go beyond that level of detail, you're going to get have to get a license. We'll look at what the details are there later. So let's jump in and take a look at this Galahad example. And at the first top level, we can look at this as, so this one actually is using more assets than you're available. So this is this example document we're going to see is pretty much the cusp of what you could do with the free version. Here is the main user interface. You can zoom in and out at any time. It's a very nice, clean interface on the whole. You can zoom around here. And what we're looking at right now is the flow. So flow is available up here. This is the story progression. So you can see kind of we go through various different aspects. So we start with the cut screen, cut scenes. We live in Camelot. Uh, based off of conditions of what the user chose, various different branching options. You can see there, dialogue driven or uh, hubs or jumps or instructions or so on. You jump off uh, relative to whatever your decision was and you keep going accordingly. So here you can see you have branching decisions, you got multiple different endings and so on. So this is a very top level view of the entire game's uh, process. At the same time, there's also some system level stuff you can deal with here. So for example, Global variables, you can set and create global variables, none in this particular example here. Uh, but go back to flow here, we can drill down in there and you see actual game state. So this is more technical of what's actually going on. So you start with starting the program, you can go through splash screens, uh, how long to last on each various different things, the various different menu options, what to do based off them. So you could do um, program flow design here as well. I'll go back to the story flow in this case. So you see here, we've got this like intro, uh, we've got some uh, relative used entries in here, items and so on. We're gonna drill down in, so we go here. We'll take a look at intro itself. So let's go into the intro, oh, sorry, scene one. So this is the very beginning. So you see here, all of the stuff that we just saw in this entire flow, so the story flow right here, every single thing here. So arrival at Camelot is a section, breakdown, and then uh, betrayal, temptation, and so on. Each one of these drills down uh, into a more depth. So we're gonna go here. Arrival at Camelot. All right, so there it is right there. Let's jump into it and we'll look at the details here. So this is where you drill down as a designer and break your game up in different sections. This also could be, a, you know, act one, act two, act three, act four kind of setup. And here you see kind of a story overview of what's going on. You can do annotations throughout. Uh, we can have a description of what is happening. And we, again, we have this automatically moves forward. Uh, then we'll have uh, dialogue-based branching. So you have uh, courtyard-based quests. We can split off and have various different uh, courtyard things happen. So here you've got Percival, for example, uh, Boars here, Maid Servant. Now you notice if we go back to the original flow, so story flow, so flow here, uh, story flow back to the root here, you'll notice it branches off of which quest you pick. So this is how you could do your ultimate quest design. Now, if you're wondering how useful this would actually be, this is the design tool that was used for Disco Elysium, which probably is the most lauded um, story-based RPG of the last two or three years. So it is definitely battle-tested. Now you're going to notice here throughout, we have uh, various different entities within different sections of the story, such as uh, Boars here. Well, it is a templated uh, entity. We can click that there and we can jump in. We can see the details of it. So some news of it, IDs of it, and so on. So you can actually define 
NPCs that could then be in turn used by your game engine. So this is also a database. Uh, it is template driven. So here you can see a template for um, this one is what did they call this uh, main character template. So here you can see you could do things like say, okay, hit points, energy levels, stamina, dexterity, and so on. So if you have uh, inventory systems, character stats, and so on, uh, you can define them using these templates. So we've got multiple different templates right here. You can go ahead and create your own. So for example, basic items or melee weapons, if you had like, um, weight for carrying items, the amount of damage it so something does, the requirements to carry it, and so on. You create them into these templates, and this is basically a front end for your game's database. Now, once again, all of the information you are entering here is accessible in your game engine through the interfaces that are available. So you can actually use this as a database entry tool for your game's data. And ultimately, behind the scenes, almost all games, especially adventure and role-playing games, are data driven. So this is the, the control you've got. You've also got here, so you can see where this character was used and in what locations. So uh, choosing an ally, which was back, uh, I think right here. It's one of the conditions over here. Uh, yeah, choosing an ally right there. So that's where this character, so we drill down and you can see that is where this particular character is used. So you can see uh, where people are used across the board, what their relationship are with other characters. So it allows you to keep track of the complexities and the branching dialogues and who dealt with who and what items they were dealt with. And then we've also got the where of it. So here you can see Camelot and Camelot is physically mapped out uh, as a physical map with the entities throughout it. So you, obviously you can see how you could use this to create the level data in your world and kind of work on it and hook it all together. Uh, at the same time, we're gonna drill down here. So we've got things like, for example, items. So now we're in the inventory section of things. Uh, this is uh, Excalibur. Excalibur is template driven. So here you can see you set like a cell, cell value of the weight some, of something, the minimum maximum damage, level to require to use and so on. Um, you got various different entities could be created that way. Same thing here. So we got uh, minor PCs. You can organize them down accordingly. So here is a gate guard being defined. And again, you can define all these various different statistics you wish. You can create whatever templates you want to do them, or you can have your own templates as well. Templates are literally just another thing. So over here, you see templates. Uh, you can design and create your own various different options to have uh, various different rules on them. And then speaking of rules, you've also got rule sets for how exports will work. That's way beyond what I wanna get into in this particular video, uh, but you get an idea of what you're dealing with. As you see, as I'm traveling through this, the user interface is intuitive enough. So you could have here, you got a game design document you wanna embed it in, you can do so here. You can have it linked to uh, relevant areas within uh, your game. Uh, so this should click, or is it over here? Uh, anyways, you can have your, your design documents built directly in here, linked across them. Uh, you can, again, set up locations, define locations. Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the, the idea behind this thing, is it, it is more or less a, a visual design tool for your game designers, but on top of that, it's got... Um, integration into your game itself. So if you've got global settings, global settings and variables that you want to create in your game, uh, you can do them right here. You work at the top level flow. Again, you've got the ability to create things like uh, dialogues, dialogues with different conditions. You can have your branching conversations here. Those can in turn interact with other entities. You can have it so that a conversation results in a, um, a change in the way that uh, someone treats you or a stat change or so on. Uh, it's uh, pretty awesome here. So for example here, you go talk to Percival and you're seeing here there's an interaction here with this entity that is defined here, Percival's armor. And then you can have it that, you know, based off of a conversation branching, you gain that particular item. Uh, so that is kind of the idea behind Artist Artisy ah, Draft. It is a really cool program, really nice user interface. It's pretty straightforward, it makes sense. Any particular time that you get confused, just hit the home button here and you can kind of go to the, the various different um, base logo uh, areas you want. Generally, you're gonna be working with these various different forms of flow charts. And again, the flow charts will, um, you can drag, you can drill down from them. Now I do wish, for example, that if I, and this might be user area, user 
Uh, okay, yeah, you can. All right, so you gotta double click into it. But as you can see, you could drill down. I don't know if any of these, none of these have nested uh, areas there, but it's a way of managing the complexity of your uh, design it is by breaking it down into these various different flow charts that are in turn. So the story flow contains all the various different other aspects of your game, and they all kind of work together. But at the top level, once again, so we go back to the very basic flow. Uh, oh, no, state flow, story flow right here. You're gonna see this is going to branch based off of what you did down here. So you, you can have some really uh, complicated flows there. And again, there are the tools here for managing those relationships. Uh, you've also got abilities to create uh, enemies in here. Everything, again, is driven by these templates, and those templates are basically populating game data, if you so wish. But if you just want to use this straight up as a design tool, that is your option as well. Um, and you can save your changes out locally. Um, yeah. That's kind of it, and here we go. We've got your export options when you're done. Uh, you can see in terms of exporting, you've got some neat options. You can actually export out to Excel or Word document format. Uh, you can have it go to XML or JSON format. So if you wanna work in your own custom game engine option, you do have those choices here, or you have Unity and Unreal Engine integration, which is even cooler. And then there is an Unreal Engine plugin available and a Unity plugin, and then you can basically use the data and the databases that you're populating here in RC Draft inside of your game engine. So in some ways, your programmer can interact with the data as it's needed in you know the, the logic side of your game, and they never have to touch it. Your designer can do all of the data-driven stuff directly here inside of RC Draft. So if this hasn't kind of made you interested in this program, uh, you're probably not a designer because if you're a designer and you've been looking for a game design tool, Odyssey Draft is kind of one of a kind and it's it's pretty awesome on the whole. So if you're interested in checking it out, uh, it is available at artisy.com. Uh, we, we kind of had a bit of an overview of what it's all about, but you do your writing, your planning, and again, your database management is probably the biggest part there. And it does have that integration into various different other game engines out there. Uh, and you have uh, JSON and other formats. So you can, you know, if you're using the Godot engine or whatever, you could create your own loader, uh, no problem. But this was used for Disco Elysium, which is, again, probably one of the most lauded story-driven RPGs lately. Uh, and then some other games out there as well uh, have been created using it, including uh, THQ Nordic uh, used it for Spellforce 3, uh, which apparently is pretty large. But again, I don't think I could do a better recommendation than Disco Elysium uses this tool for their management because it was a very wordy game. Uh, and this did all of the uh, dialogue trees uh, for them, which is a pretty cool accomplishment for Artisy on the whole. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, there are direct game engine integrations here. So you can use this for uh, the data population side. So your designers can work with uh, you know, a design tool and then on, you can integrate it in your game logic on the other end and access those things. Plus also there are, um, there are APIs you can work with yourself. And if you want to integrate it in your own thing, you can get JSON or XML formats uh, with well-documented versions there. But you've got Unity and Unreal Engine uh, editor uh, export versions and plugins to make it work easily with those two game engines. Uh, so it's kind of a neat tool in that regard. And then to talk about pricing. So as we mentioned earlier on, there is a free version and that free version is fully and utterly legit. Um, it could do basically the complexity of the game we just saw. Uh, also, if we go back to, how do I go back? Close project, all right. We go back and see the other example that they have in action, which is this uh, adventure style game, like a Manic Mansion style game. So let's go to the flow, all right, flow. All right, so you can see this is for creating walkthrough of an adventure style game. You wanna track the progress screens to screen, the various different ending options. A uh, few different characters in place, again, using templates. Um, you, here you can see it's using things to track relationships between various different characters and so on. Well, this example that we're seeing right here, in terms of, again, you can click this button at any time to see, it's only using about a half of what the free version is doing. So if you're creating a simple-ish adventure game, for example, uh, th this free version, uh, fully functional, gives all the features and functionality you want, uses about half of the capabilities. So... Uh, and also, does this guy finally have some global variables in it? Yeah, it does. So here you can see uh, examples of global variables. And these can, again, all be exported out to your uh, game engine. So then in the game engine, you deal with these as local variables of the type defined here. But they can also be used in the story. So if, say, in branching story dialogue, something happens and you want to say, 
the person is yeah now loony, uh, you can do so. You can set that variable there. Uh, so this is an example that actually has some global variables in it. But once again, the free version is basically using about half, this, this demo uses about half of what you would get from the free version. So the free version is quite generous. But let's say you wanna go beyond that. Well, you either got a uh, multi-user, which I'm gonna ignore for today, or single user. So if this is just you working alone, uh, we're gonna look at the single user pricing and we're gonna find out what stock photo guy has to say about pricing here. And it's really quite reasonable to be honest. So first off, you've got the free version up to 660 objects uh, per project. You can create as many projects as you want. You can use it forever. You can use it commercially. And that is zero euro uh, plus 19% VAT which would bring it to zero euro. Uh, whereas Artisy Draft 3 Flex License, which is also known as subscription-based software, uh, you're looking at seven euro a month, which again, I think is really, that's quite generous to be honest. And that is uh, everything you need, unlimited objects, unlimited projects. And then finally, we got the Perpetual License, which is basically a hundred euro, uh, use it forever. So if you do not like subscription-based, go over the Perpetual. You're looking, I think it looks like about a year and a half Perpetual pays for itself. Uh, these are monthly prices. You go annual, uh, you save even more money. Uh, so yeah, it does look like it's literally about a year and a half. So I also have to applaud Artisy Draft basically on their uh, pricing. Their pricing is very uh, reasonable, especially for an indie developer. If you're looking at a multi-user environment, um, actually it's still very reasonable. So we're looking, okay, so an annual basis, uh, professional, three users, two viewers is 53 per month. So in a commercial environment uh, with multiple users working um, together, it does get a little bit more expensive. But again, that makes sense. You're in a, if you're, say, uh, THQ Nordic or the Disco Elysium team, uh, this is still like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of employees' um, actual monthly salary. So I, I do think that they've nailed it on terms of pricing. I, I actually have to applaud Artisy Draft on a couple of levels here. They nailed it in the free trial. It's not a trial. It's a free version that is legitly useful to an indie style developer. I think they nailed it on their pricing, both on, you know, for they've got to make money. And I think on the team level pricing, it's quite reasonable. I think the single user pricing is very reasonable. And I think the fact that they have perpetual licenses uh, has to be applauded. So Artisy Draft basically across the board is... Uh, it's, it's a really cool program, one I highly recommend checking out. So if you've never used this one before, again, come on in, check out the free version. It is fully functioning. Uh, it just has some limits in terms of the scope. You do have, again, scripting ability throughout it, and this can be implemented directly into your, um, your game's export. Uh, so if you're looking for designing, for doing conversation branching, for creating design documents, because again, you can export it to the doc and uh, Excel formats and so on. So if you're working with different teams, a great tool in that regard. Uh, it's just, it's a cool tool for sure. I would highly recommend checking it out. And I, I applaud Artisy on their, um, their business model. I wonder what you think of it and what you think of this free version in general. And have you ever checked out Artisy Draft before? And if not, is this free version tempting you to do so now? That's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.